Today, we're going to use warm and cool grays to paint a collie dog. This is Henry, our rescue. Let's get started. So yesterday, I did a video about warm and cool grays, and that's where the insert on the upper right-hand corner comes from. I did a demo on how to mix warm and cool grays. And as you can see from the photograph, Henry is, there's no direct sunlight, so um, this can happen a lot if you don't have a direct sunlight source, where everything is sort of mid-toned, except, you know, his eye, his nose, a little bit of his mouth, maybe around the ear isn't mid-toned, but most of his face is mid-toned. And I'm going to have to mix a lot of grays in order to, uh, grays and browns, you know, kind of, um, but I'm thinking grays. Um, and I'm thinking grays and I'm thinking, well, where things appear um, warmer or yellower, I'm going to add um, a yellower mix to my grays. And where things are cooler, I'll lean toward blue and make that a cooler gray. So that's what's going on in my head. And um, if I'm going to put a, a link to the video that I did yesterday so that you can, you can look at um, the demo of mixing those warm and cool grays. So, um, but then I wanted to show you today kind of how you put it into practice. <laughs> the, the picture keeps falling down. Oh, life, life happens. All right, so the first thing that I'm doing here is, um, this is Arsh paper. It is a uh, cold press and I don't use masking fluid. I use a little bit of Naples yellow, really watered down. And I put that in the places that I know I want to, that I want to have remain really, really white. So that's what I'm doing first. And off to the side, I'm mixing. Now I don't, um, and I'm gonna kind of describe as best as I can to remember what I'm mixing. I know what I'm doing first is I'm gonna mix up, well, let's see what I do. I think, uh, I can't remember if I paint from my lightest light to my darkest darks or my darkest darks to my lightest lights. I think I put in some darks at first, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens here. Uh, this is four times as fast as I usually paint. Um, and I know that not being able to see what's happening on the palette is, is a detriment. If I do put the palette in uh, on this screen, it's either too small to see, or um, if I do a split screen, you only see part of the palette. All right, so here's the first mix coming up. That is a warm gray. So that's going to be cerulean blue, um, a rose, and a little bit of Naples yellow. So I'm seeing that's just slightly darker uh, than the Naples yellow I already put in. If you squint a little bit, you'll see that's probably a value of about two. So it would appear I'm going to work from my lightest lights to my darkest darks. All right, now I just shifted that gray. I would have added a little bit more cerulean blue to it, possibly a little bit of ultramarine blue. I'd be surprised if I went to ultramarine blue so fast. But if you squint, you'll see that's now darker than what I put in before. I'm squinting and I'm saying that's probably a value of about two. Ah, here's some pure cerulean blue going in. So that's going to be at least a value of four. It's got water added to it, so maybe it's a four or five. I'm squinting. It's definitely darker than anything else I put in. Now, I call that color spots a value when I put in a pure color. That's a value swap out, but I think it adds to the overall piece when you can do that. Now here comes some darks. So this would have been, now ultramarines entered the picture. I would have tipped my gray, that same gray, by adding ultramarine to it. There's a lot of ultramarine in this gray now and probably a lot of also, um, what do they say, cerulean, there's cerulean showing up there, but there's ultramarine blue happening as well. Because in order to get to a dark, I have to introduce a darker blue. You know, a darker blue than cerulean blue, I usually go to ultramarine blue next. I, if I go down into indigo, which I'll do as we get near the end, that's, that's my darkest, darkest blue. So if you squint right now, you'll see that there are some colors that you can, you know, they're li obviously lighter and darker colors, but they're also warmer and cooler colors happening. And that's what I want to emphasize here, warmer and cooler. I get out my value finder and check to see, because like I said, once you take care of the lightest lights and some of the darkest darks, which are going to end up darker near the end, what you have left is mostly mid-tones in that dog's face. So I have to look really carefully and ask myself what looks cooler. If there's a place that looks cooler, then I need to add blue to my gray mix. And if it's warmer, then I need to add some yellow to my mix always thinking warmer, cooler, warmer, cooler, because that's in the end what's going to make the form look like it has some mass to it. I can't rely on value, just on value because the values are pretty darn close to each other. Um, 
And I don't want to do a color value swap out. I mean, I could have put in like a dark purple, for example, for his nose or or for those places, you know, his eye or around the places around his ear. But I didn't want to do a color value swap out. I'm not matching to the photograph, but I wanted to use grays. I wanted to use sort of an infinite variety of grays because that's kind of what I see in, um, I think I called him Fig, didn't I? This is Henry, the rescue dog, who's only been with us for a month. <laughs> Fig sadly has... Um, um, sadly died of old age, and so um, we took in a rescue dog. So we're getting to know Henry, and the best way to get to know him is, of course, give him lots of puppy loving time and to paint him. So here's a warm gray. You could argue that that's definitely um, leaning toward brown, so you I can see that that has some burnt sienna in it. It's still going to have some cerulean in it because I want to have it tilt toward gray and probably Naples yellow. There's a lot of Naples yellow that I'm using. That's primarily the yellow I'm using to, to make these grays warmer because it's a neutral yellow. It's not going to turn anything into a green or into an orange. And like I said from the beginning, I wanted this whole picture as much as I possibly could to be either grays or browns. So now I'm just looking at value shapes. The brush is probably a number 20 flat um, because I want to use as few strokes as possible, which is just something I like to do. It's not, um, you know, just something I like to do. I like to simplify as much as I can. Now, because Henry is a rescue dog and has been through trauma, I can't use my hair dryer. Normally around here, I would use a hair dryer to dry things. Um, and instead, I have to be patient, which is very hard for me, but I'm sympathetic to Henry because he's had some experience with a hair dryer that must have been terrifying. So um, in this house, it's uh, dogs come before art. <laughs> so, all right, so this is, a, again, a very, very warm, gray. I guess you could argue that's sort of a brown, but I want everything. Uh, the reason I'm saying that they're grays is because there's so much cerulean blue in every one of these mixes that I'm doing. I have found in Collies, and also because I used to paint pet portraits, you know, exclusively, I used to paint a lot, a lot, a lot of pets. There's a lot of uh, blue that's underneath a dog's fur, uh, you know, especially golden retrievers, uh, not golden retrievers, but those are black labs. Oof, a lot of blue going on in there. Um, there, I, I think, I think if we were to see the dogs naked without their fur, there's something, um, they're not all pink under there. There's other things going on. Um, now I wanted to have a pop of color because of his, um, collar. And I'm putting this in as a placeholder. I can see this has some, uh, alizarin red. I'm squinting. And right now it's the same value as, uh, his face. I'm going to need to darken that up but I needed a reference point. There's some more cerulean blue, for the most part, going in for the eye. Again, trying to put a pop of color in there. Everything is looking a little too washed out for me right now. Um, and that is because I haven't had the opportunity to use the hairdryer, which I would really, at this point, I'm just dying to use, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm going to let time take care of it. And, um, or if I need to, I'll go take it by the wood stove and hold it there for a few minutes. I think that's as far as I, I'm getting awfully close to where if, if I don't dry it, I'm going to end up with a lot of um, mud. And I want to keep the colors separate because I see the color is a separate shapes on his face in the photograph. And you can see a lot of the color dabs on the upper left hand side. Um, now, in order to make color pop, and admittedly, there's not a lot of color in Henry, what I do is I put in a gray background. This gray is a warm gray. Uh, you can see uh, Naples yellow, cerulean blue, a little bit of that permanent rose, an awful lot of Naples yellow in it because the sun is coming in behind him. So it's quite bright behind him and then gets a little darker down below where his nose is. These are all colors I've already used in the painting, so they'll kind of go um, nicely. I don't like, if I can, I don't ever want to put in something in the background that, uh, you know, like I could have splashed a mid-tone green behind him, but um, but that just wouldn't have, I don't know, maybe I just wasn't in the mood today. And also because my mission was to use as many grays as I possibly could in order to paint the dog. Now I'm looking, you can see all those values there. They're all really close to each other. And you can see they're really close to each other on the dog and they're really close to each other on the painting too. That's That's the challenge here. 
you know, if, if Henry had been out in a bright sunlight and had a deep shadow somewhere um, or shadows on him, I could have done something different. I went back and, and um, made some adjustments, with a, which I didn't put on camera, just to um, put in a second coat in some places and definitely darkened up that collar. But you can see a lot of the grays in that upper right hand clip I used in painting Henry. So I hope that's helpful. You can use, uh, you know, you can make a whole painting just based on grays and then look back and surprisingly, um, it has a lot of color. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel. Many of you who watch haven't joined yet. Please do. Don't be shy. It doesn't uh, cost anything completely free. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.